Hey, what is up everybody? I'm Star Lord, and welcome back to my exclusive PlayStation 4 Skyrim Remastered Mod Showcase. Today's episode is going to be pretty awesome as the creation kit has actually just went public, meaning that everybody now can upload all of their mods to Bethesda.net. So in the next couple of weeks, we will be seeing a lot more console mods for the PlayStation 4 console. Anyway guys, let me remind you, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to give it a like and go over to my channel to subscribe and check out all of my other Skyrim Remastered guides, videos and all that other kind of cool shit. Anyway guys, let's get on with today's mods. So, one thing that I cannot get enough of in Skyrim is the creatures, you know, there is such an amazing amount of different creatures in this game, and sometimes, you know, once you've killed all of them, you're kind of looking for more amazing big creatures to go and kill to kind of enhance your gameplay experience, and that is what today's first mod actually does, it is called Legendary Creatures by Hroll. Now once you install this mod, simply go to the banner of Mer, and you will find that there is a journal on the counter right in front of the barmaid. Simply pick it up and read it and you will find 8 locations to 8 huge legendary creatures that have been scattered around the Skyrim map. And I would say guys, they are pretty darn powerful and pretty darn legendary. I did have a lot of trouble taking these guys down without the correct equipment and correct armor. Now of course killing creatures is all great when you're out and about just exploring the wilderness, but when you've actually been tasked with killing legendary creatures, you kind of want something in return, and that is where H-Roll actually added in 8 unique items to the 8 unique actual killable creatures that you will find. So, you know, once you've actually killed them, it won't be all time wasted, it won't be none of that. You will actually get some sort of reward in return, and each of these creatures have something different, which is very good and very varied. So yeah, if you guys are looking for an extra couple of hours of hunting down legendary creatures, then make sure that you go and download this mod. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Now mod number 2 is definitely a hit or miss for most people and at first I was like going to miss it but then I saw how many people actually downloaded this mod for the PlayStation 4 so I kind of gave it a little look for myself and then soon started to realize that it was actually a hit. This mod is definitely awesome and I will be using it for the remainder of this mod series. This is the Dreadborn Knight Follower by Vengeance Mods. So companion mods are pretty easy to create, I've got to be honest, I've made one myself and they are, you know, they really are. Now with PlayStation 4 not having external assets, you can bet your ass that there will be a whole load of companion mods going about. But I can guarantee you right now that none of them will be as cool as this one right here. This one is pretty much done to the full extent. Now once you download and activate the mod, you will find a new location has been put on your map called the Dreadborn Landing Area. Once you actually fast travel here, it will not take you long to figure out where he is. It's in a little tiny castle that doesn't have a bed or anything, he just kind of sleeps on the floor I guess. But once you actually get here, you will find him and what you're seeing on screen right now was the first time that I ever met him. I actually spawned there and I automatically got attacked by a dog and by some other kind of guy. And he just came out of nowhere, kicked their asses and pretty much saved me. So I love that. That was pretty darn cool of him. So I instantly liked him already. So one huge thing here is that there isn't actually any lore behind the character, where he's from, how he got there, or where he plans to go. You just kind of go over and talk to him, and then he follows you, and that's, I guess, okay. There is, again, room for improvement there. Other than that, this guy levels up when you level up, so he won't go overly overpowered against any enemy, so you actually will have a little bit of a battle with him every now and then, and I would suggest do not disregard him in a city, so if you let him go as a companion in one of the cities, for some unknown reason, he actually goes around killing all the gods, and that's not good at all, you know? So make sure you guys don't do that, 
Other than all of that that I've just said, this companion mod is probably one of the best that I've seen so far in this PS4 mod section. So yeah, if you'd liked what you've seen on screen, go and download it. Let's move on. Have you always wanted your game to be something like The Hobbit or something from the Lord of the Rings series? Then say hello to Supreme and Volumetric Fog by Manny GT. Now I'm gonna go ahead and be honest with you guys, I never really noticed what the fog looked like before I actually installed this mod. Then I installed it and I was like, holy crap, I've been missing out. This is a great mod and it's so simple, it basically just adds a bit more fog into the game, a little bit of a deeper fog I guess you could call it. And like I said, I didn't really know how light the fog was before, I honestly thought there was no problem with it. But then when I installed this, I was like, holy crap, this makes the game so much better. It just gives that kind of gloomy feel, that kind of Lord of the Rings kind of feel to your game, which is always so great and kind of immersive too. Now, I'm not going to butter this mod up to be the best mod in the whole wide world. There is problems with it, but they are minor and they shouldn't stop you from actually installing this mod. One of them is that it does give you a slight frames per second drop every now and then in large areas when it's having trouble to actually load the game. And the other thing is when you're actually walking along your journey and the fog hits, sometimes the graphical textures of the rocks, the floors, the trees, that kind of stuff tend to load in a little bit slow, kind of breaking the immersion just a little tiny bit. But like I said, I would definitely not let those kind of cons put you off this mod as this is one of the best mods I have downloaded yet. Other than that, when you're going through the wilderness, it just looks amazing. It has that gloomy feel, it has that feel that you want in this kind of game. And I've got to say, when it's actually sunny and it has fog, you see the light rays bursting through the fog and it just adds that kind of ambient feel to the game. That, along with the soundtrack of this amazing game, is just altogether perfect. And I could not have asked for a better mod when hunting in the wilderness. It's just a great mod. I would suggest all you guys definitely download this one. It's pretty great. So yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty great, I guess. <laughs> but let's move on. Now I know there are some of you guys who like to have all of your hours played in this game. You know, you like to have a million thousand hours played in Skyrim Remastered. And then there are some who do like to cheat and get ahead of themselves. And that is where this mod, Instant Mastery by Khajiit Taraj, actually comes in. I'm very sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, by the way. It's a kind of hard name to pronounce, I guess. <laughs> but basically what this does is adds in a cheat chest to Riverwood. And what this cheat chest contains is a whole load of books for you to actually level up your perk tree. And I'm gonna say, if you guys are just having a mess around save, or you kinda wanna skip and make the game a little bit quicker, this mod is absolutely for you, you know? I'm not going to judge you guys. If you wanna cheat and kind of change the game yourself and be OP, then that is absolutely fine. Basically, once you go into Riverwood and take all of the books out of the chest, there will also be a spell called Instant Mastery. What you'll want to do is equip it to your hands and then cast the spell itself. Once you've then cast it and you know it's active with the aura spreading around you, go over to your items, go into the books that you've just taken out of the chest and simply read whichever books you want to level up. So let's say you want to level up your destruction. What you will do is just open up the Destruction 1, then close it. Open up Destruction 2, close it, and then continue on like that. So this mod, I guess, is pretty good. You know, it actually gives you a little bit of an option on what you want to level up, rather than actually leveling up everything. So for that, I would say it's a pretty good mod, because I know some of you guys don't have the time to actually play these games. I know some of you guys like to cheat a little bit. And like I said, that is absolutely fine. It's your game, you've spent your money, you play it the way you want to. But I thought that I would introduce this mod to you guys today because I know I have been getting a lot of actual messages asking do I know of any mods that do exactly what this mod does. But yeah, that has pretty much been it for this mod. Let's move on to the final mod in today's episode. Now the final mod in today's showcase I believe all of you guys will like and will install. It is called Easier Riders Dungeon Pack by Easier Rider. 
Now what Ryder has done with this dungeon pack is actually added in four new dungeons to the world of Skyrim, each scattered around at different points. Once you find one of these dungeons, it will take you around about up to an hour to actually fight your way through and explore all of it. So, you know, that is a lot of gameplay time right there. There is only one dungeon that takes around about 15 minutes to complete and Easy Rider actually stated that in his mod description. It is a low difficulty kind of dungeon. Now, whilst I was playing through these dungeons, I was thinking to myself, wow, these this doesn't feel like a mod at all. It feels like Bethesda have actually created it and put it into the game. It doesn't feel like I've downloaded this at all. And when you come across a mod where you think that, I think that's a pretty successful mod, personally. That's just my opinion. But there is one or two things that I did stumble upon that were kind of annoying. The first thing is they are actually not linked to any kind of quest. They are basically just dungeons that kind of have not much of a purpose. You can explore through them, fight through them, you will find a couple of awesome items, but there's no actual quest linked to them, and I would have really, really liked to have seen that. And the other thing was that when I explored one dungeon in particular, there was a couple of graphical changes, such as like the wall would disappear and then I could see like the whole world in front of me, which really broke the immersion, but I actually found that it was just one or two places that this actually happened, so it didn't really break it that much, but I would like to see that cleaned up as soon as possible. Besides from those two problems, I think this is a very awesome mod and you guys should definitely go and download it. Anyway guys, that has pretty much been it for today's video, I do hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, please remember to leave a like, and go and check out my other content on my channel. And until next time, I've been Star Lord. I'll see ya!